Science Lesson 2. We're continuing our study of electrical circuits and today the two things in particular that we're learning about are how a switch works in an electrical circuit and also how to correctly draw the scientific diagram for an electrical circuit. Okay, let's revise what we learned just or in the previous lesson. So there are five statements and I want you to think about whether each of those is true or false. You can just work with me on this one. So the first statement says a simple circuit consists of a power source, wires and a load. True or false? True. A light bulb is an example of a power source. All right, so think about the three things, power source, wires, load. What is a light bulb actually an example of? False. A light bulb is actually a load. Electrical energy can be transferred through wires. True. The load transforms electrical energy into other types of energy. All right, so transferred means carried through and transformed means changed. And that's true, the electrical energy. For example, if it travels through a light bulb, uh, transforms into light and heat, as we know light bulbs can create heat as well. An incomplete circuit allows electrical energy to flow around the circuit. False, and the clue is in the word incomplete. All right, uh, has to be a complete circuit for electricity to flow. All right, now let's focus on a switch. Circuits often include a switch, which is an electrical component that allows electricity to be turned on and off. And that's very important to have a switch. You think of all the electrical systems in your house that would constantly be on if we didn't have a switch. So when the switch is closed um, or on, electricity has an unbroken path to follow. Uh, when the switch is open or in an off position, there is a break in the path of the circuit and so electricity cannot flow. So in terms of um, electrical circuits, a closed switch means it's a complete circuit and an open switch means it's an incomplete circuit. Many electrical appliances use switches to turn the devices on and off and each time you turn a light on or off, you are using a switch and that's why it's called a light switch. So I want you to have a bit of a scavenger hunt around your home Think of the different types of switches that we have. So two of the main types of switches are a um, toggle switch. Now a toggle means that it will swivel and move into an on position or an off position. And so this first one and the third one are examples of toggle switches. And the other type of switch that's very common is a push button switch. Okay, And that makes the connection by pushing a button. So I want you to see if you can just either go for a search around your house for the next few minutes and make a list of devices that use each type of switch um, or just sit and think about the different devices around your home. So pause the video now and off you go for a scavenger hunt. See you when you're back. How did you go? I I guess we don't really think about the types of um, switches that things have, whether it's a toggle switch or whether it's a push button, but I bet you found a heap of them around the home. Okay, let's see. Some of these are common toggle switches. Okay, so you've got the type here that um, turns. So it might be on a stove, it might be on um, a radio or something where you turn it and you can feel it click into different positions. This type here is often used with the external part of air conditioning units, but you can toggle and so it'll actually tell you sometimes when it's in the on position or whether it's in the off position, and of course the power point. In addition to that, you've got push button ones such as a car ignition, traffic lights work with that type of an idea, the home button plus the side buttons on iPhones. Uh, games often use it, as you can see here. There's plenty of uh, push button switches involved there. 
All right. So the second thing we're looking at is how to draw circuit diagrams. And there is a correct way to draw a diagram scientifically. So it says here, electrical circuits can be represented as diagrams called circuit diagrams or electrical diagrams. And a circuit diagram uses universal circuit symbols. And that means everybody uses much the same ones. And so they're recognized worldwide. And these are used to show how electrical components in circuits are connected to each other. So they're useful for a number of reasons. You can design circuits using them, but you can also help to construct circuits and to help identify where faulty electrical components may exist when a circuit doesn't work anymore. So circuit diagrams do not show physical size. So in other words, it's just a diagram. Like we have diagrams in maths that can represent any size. Um, circuit diagrams don't necessarily represent physical size or even the shape. Pretty much what we find is that we draw circuit diagrams in rectangles or squares. So here are common parts of simple circuits. You've got the cell, and this here is a cell diagram. And you can see here, it's got the two lines leading into a longer, thinner component and a shorter, wider component. Wire, of course, can come in all sorts of shapes, but we draw a wire as a single black line. This is a symbol for a buzzer. There are a couple of different symbols you'll come across for um, lamps or light bulbs. Those two there. And then the switch symbol is another common symbol. And this is a switch in an open position and a switch in a closed position. Of course, when it's open, the circuit is broken and so electricity won't flow. Closed or switched on means that it will flow. All right, so see how well you just recall what we talked about there. So here's a circuit diagram. Notice the square type of shape. As I said before, they're always drawn in a square or a rectangle. And it's easy to draw with different parts on different sides. So do you remember what this part here is at the top? If you said light bulb, you're correct. Here we have a switch and it's in its open position. This one was for the cell or battery, the power source in this diagram. And this part here is a wire. All right, I'm certain you did well. Now, I want you to have a practice drawing those circuit diagrams in the table. Um, look, sorry, on a piece of paper for you, um, to look at the, or to draw for me, for me a circuit containing a cell, a light bulb, and the wires that connect those. Can you draw that for me now? It doesn't take long to draw one. So it has a cell, a light bulb, and two wires. Something like that. So there's the cell, there's the light bulb, and the wire that connects them together. All right, can you now draw for me one that contains any of the following? I'll give you an example, but um, it won't necessarily match yours exactly, but let's see how you go. Pause now while you do this one because it might take you a little bit longer. And here's an example of one that you may have drawn. This particular one has a closed switch, a power source, a light bulb, and that symbol for a buzzer. Okay, it only has one of each of those things there, but of course connected by wires. All right, here are three different drawn diagrams but that's not the correct scientific way to show them. So to finish off, see if you can draw each diagram, scientific diagram or circuit diagram for each of these. The first one contains a power source, a switch and a buzzer. This one in the middle contains a power source, a switch and a light bulb. But there's nothing stopping us having more than one thing. So we've got a power source, 
and three uh, light bulbs in a series. And I've just used another scientific word that we're coming across, a series. So I'll give you a clue, this is a series circuit. All right, pause the video and draw each of those on a piece of paper. How did you go? All right, let's have a look at the a circuit diagram for the first one. So square or rectangular in shape. We've got a switch, a power source and a buzzer there. It doesn't matter whether you drew yours in an open or closed position for your switch. If it was closed, this would touch in there instead of being open. In fact, if you look at this diagram, that's in a closed position. So we've got the power source, a closed switch, and a symbol for a light bulb. And in the third one, we've got the power source, three light bulbs in series, no switch here. So you'd have to dis disconnect this one by unclipping the wire. But it could be unclipped at any point, any point along the way, because any uh, unclipping or any breaking of the circuit would stop electricity would fly, uh, from flowing and it would have the same effect. I guess with this one, the clue too would be it has to be a closed switch because the light bulb is on. If the light bulb was off, then I guess we would have drawn a closed circuit. I wonder if you picked up on that one. All right. That's it for today, guys. We learned about two things there. We learned about how to correctly draw a circuit diagram, and we also learned about um, what a switch does within a circuit. Thanks, guys. Done for today. I'll catch you next time.